Hi, I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and welcome back to The Hive. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Local Tuya. We'll talk about how to install it into your Home Assistant instance. We'll take a look at how to configure it. And we'll also try to do a side-by-side -side comparison between Local Tuya and the native Tuya cloud integration. And lastly, we'll talk about some of the pros and cons for local to you. So while I roll the intro, why don't you take a moment to subscribe? And while you're at it, if you hit the bell icon, you'll also get notified when I release new videos each week. And if you want to help to support the channel, check out some of my affiliate links in the video description down below, including an affiliate link from NordVPN and a buy me a coffee link. So with all of that out of the way, let's get started. So with more and more to your devices recently making use of the Realtek chips instead of the ESP8266s, it's become increasingly more difficult to flash these cheaper to your devices with TAS Motor or ESP Home, meaning getting them out of the cloud is becoming just harder and harder. Enter Local to you. Local to you is essentially a local API for traditionally cloud controlled to your devices, meaning that we should be able to significantly reduce the latency when working with to your devices and we'll be putting that to the test a little bit later on. Now there are some prerequisites. Local to you is a home assistant community store or hacks custom component for home assistant. So you're going to need to have already set up hacks in your home assistant instance. You're also going to need to have a Tuya IoT developer account. Now this is separate from your regular Tuya account and you can sign up for one of these at iot.tuya.com. Now if you've already set up the new Home Assistant Tuya integration, then you should already have one of these developer accounts and you should in fact already be good to go with local Tuya. If you don't already have an IoT developer account, you can on this website, click the sign up button just here. I'm going to sign into my, to your IoT developer console and we'll get started. Okay, so from the overview page in the uh, to your IoT platform, we're going to go to the cloud menu down the left hand side and we can click on development here as well in this cloud menu. On the cloud management page, we can click create cloud project and I'm going to call this local to ya. Uh, we'll give it a description of local to ya. This description is optional, but we do need to select an industry, a development method, uh, and we can make that smart home. Uh, and a data center is going to be Central Europe. In my case, your data center may be different depending on where your smart devices are paired, where your uh, to your account is. I'm going to choose Central Europe. I'll tap create on that. Uh, and now we need to authorize some API services. Now the very minimum that we need is already selected for us and that is the IoT core, uh, but you can add other things in here if you like uh, to add some more information to your device. I think you should probably be adding in the device status notification. This would be the same setup that you would have if you were going to be setting up the uh, Home Assistant to your cloud integration. I've selected those items. I'm going to tap authorize. And now that we've authorized that, we've got local to you in here. So we've got our access ID and our access secret and client secret. What I'm going to need to do here is pair my devices to this. So uh, I'm going to tap the devices tab across the top here. We need to click on link to your app account and we're going to click add app account here as well. And so now that we've got that QR code up on screen, I'm going to open my two year smart app on my iPhone. I'm gonna tap the plus button and click add a device in the top right corner. 
And then again in the top right corner, we've got the thing to uh, scan a code and I'm going to scan the QR code on screen and it's saying logging in uh, and please make sure it was you and I'm going to confirm that. And now we've got, you're trying to link the app account and subordinate devices with this project. Select the device linking method and device permissions to continue. I'm going to go automatic link and I'm going to go with uh, read, write and manage. Uh, we probably don't even need that. We probably just need to read permissions, but read, write and manage seems like a good place to be. I'm going to tap OK on this and it's linking 15 devices. Uh, and it's going to complete within 15 seconds. Other devices can't be linked with this project and they're, until they're linked successfully. We'll tap OK. And now we have our devices listed. So if I uh, scroll through, we can see that there's multiple pages here. Uh, or I can change that to let's just make it 40 a page. And we should be able to see all of these devices here. And what's fairly important in this list is these device IDs and we're going to need to get these device IDs when we're then going to try and uh, pair these devices. For the purposes of my demonstration here today, I'm going to be looking at this brilliant smart switch. Uh, so I will uh, copy that device ID and I'm also going to be looking at this brilliant globe. Uh, and I'll come back to that a little bit later on. Uh, for now, I'm just going to close this window. And if I go back to all devices, we'll see we've got those device IDs again listed here uh, next to the device names. The device names that you see on the left hand side here should coincide with the names that you have inside your two year smart application. You may notice though that we don't have everything in here. Uh, for example, Murphy is not in here. But so now that we've got our devices list showing up here, I'm going to open up API Explorer on the left hand side and that's going to open in a new tab in our browser here. And once that's opened, I'm going to go to the general devices management exposure triangle here and I want to get get device information and I'm going to paste the device string into this device ID here and then I'm going to click submit request and we should get a returned result which contains this local key parameter and I need to copy this local key parameter and store it somewhere easy to find. So once you've got the local key parameter, another piece of information that's going to be particularly useful for you is the MAC address of the device. So we can go to this smart home management system exposure triangle here and go to device management, and we can go to batch query equipment factory information and put device ID in here or multiple device IDs, which is particularly handy. And when we submit this request, we can then get the MAC address of the device. So what I've done is gathered all of the device IDs, the local keys and the MAC addresses of the devices that I want to be able to look at into an Excel spreadsheet so that I can easily add them into Home Assistant with local to you without too much hassle. Now, I will tell you that I actually got distracted while writing the script for this episode and I ended up writing a Python script to automatically extract this data from the Tuya API and put it into a CSV file so that I don't have to do it manually. And also it might make your life easier if you want to start using local to you after watching this video. And I'll be putting a link to that GitHub repository for the script in the video description down below. So now that we've got the device IDs, the local keys and the Mac addresses, it's time to install local to you into Home Assistant using hacks. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to go over to Home Assistant and I'm going to open up Hacks here and I'm going to go to the Integrations menu and we're going to click on Explore and Download Repositories. And in the search for repository, I'm going to search for Local and Local to you is the first that comes up. So we'll click on that item 
and it's going to tell us a little bit about the repository. Uh, you can go through and look at how the setup is here. There's two different ways you can set it up, either YAML configuration files, uh, and you can add that to your config.yaml file, or you can use the config flow, which uh, is probably the easier method, uh, and we'll take a look at that method. Uh, I won't be doing the YAML config in this video. So as long as you're happy with the documentation, you can click on download this repository with hacks and uh, you can select a version if you want, uh, but I'm just going to click on download and we'll just keep that as the latest version. Now, once this has finished downloading, I'm going to need to restart Home Assistant for it to activate. And then once Home Assistant has restarted, we should then be able to add the accessories. So I have chosen a couple of my two-year based accessories to do some testing here. Uh, I have this Arlec Grid Connect Smart Switch, um, which is a switch only. There's no energy monitoring on it. Uh, and I'll be using that as my control. Uh, and we have the brilliant Smart sw uh, Switch with energy monitoring here. Uh, and I'll be using that to integrate into Home Assistant. So we'll do uh, just the one switch uh, and we'll compare the latency between these two. So I'll also be uh, testing out this brilliant smart light bulb uh, and uh, we'll, we'll not be doing any latency tests with that. It's just gonna be a straight uh, test to see whether or not the functionality still works appropriately. Uh, so I'm restarting Home Assistant. Uh, we'll just pause briefly there and when we come back, uh, we will get the accessories loaded into local to you. Now in the interest of full disclosure, I've only tested smart switches in the lead up to filming. So I actually have no idea what I'm doing with the light bulb. So we'll be figuring that one out together. So now that Home Assistant has restarted, uh, we're going to need to go to the configuration menu and then devices and services so that I'm on the integrations tab and I'm going to click on add integration in the bottom right hand corner and I'm going to search for local and a local to you is here. So I'm going to click on local to you. It's going to say, please wait while local to you is being set up. And we now need to pick a device. Now uh, it says pick one of the automatically discovered devices or the ellipsis to manually add a device. So from the drop down here, we should be able to see some of our devices and it's listed by the device ID here in uh, this menu. So using this drop down menu can help us to streamline our setup if we know the device ID and we are hawk eyed enough to actually make sure that we're selecting the right one. It can be a bit difficult, especially they have almost an identical uh, device ID with only a few characters difference. So uh, that may not always be the best option. What we can do instead, if we click the drop down menu and select the ellipsis at the bottom, that's the three dots, and then click submit, we then get a chance to fill in the basic device details. So the name entered here will be used to identify the integration itself as seen in the integrations page, and you'll add entities and give them names in the following steps. So I'm going to start with uh, local brilliant, uh, and we need to get the local key, the host, and the device ID. So from my spreadsheet, I'm going to grab the device ID from the Brilliant plug, and I'm going to paste the device ID in here. I'm going to grab the local key from here, and I'm going to paste that into the local key field on Home Assistant. The next thing I need is the host, which is going to be the IP address of the device. Now I don't have the IP address in my spreadsheet, but I do have the MAC address of the device. So what I can do is open up LANSCAN and I can scan my network. And then in the top right hand corner, once the scan is finished, I can punch in the MAC address of the device. And we see that we are on 192.168.1.193. So I can right click and copy the IP address and back over to Home Assistant and 192.168.1.193 and we can click on submit. Now we need to choose which type of entity this is and I'm going to click on the drop down menu and this is a switch 
uh, and uh, because it's this brilliant smart switch. So I'm going to click submit on there and we need to fill out the details for an entity with type switch. All settings except for ID can be changed from the options page later. Now, generally speaking, uh, this first one, the ID one, you shouldn't need to worry about. And if I turn the switch on, we might actually see that change because currently the value is false. It hasn't updated for whatever reason, but generally speaking, the ID you don't need to change. The friendly name, I'm going to call this local brilliant. Okay, and then for the switch, we can then start selecting which of the pins on our smart switch are used for different pieces of information. So if I click voltage, voltage should hopefully be a relatively easy one to find. I'm guessing it's this 20 value because it's 2456. Uh, and I believe that's going to be about 245.6 volts. Uh, and uh, we could check that, uh, but I'm sure it's fine. For current, I'm going to select this 180. I think that's going to be about uh, what we're drawing in terms of milliamps. Uh, so we'll leave that. And current consumption, I'm not sure exactly what to select here. So what you can potentially do here is open up your To Your Smart app and go to the device that you're looking at. And then if you go to say the electric in this case, we should then be able to make a reasonable guess as to which of the items in this list actually relate to uh, our sensors here. So uh, we're looking at our current electricity in the two year app is 104. Uh, I think that's gonna be that 25 value that was 180 at some point. Our current power is 12.6, uh, so I'm trying to figure out which one that's going to be. I might go for this 1666. I think that's going to be fairly close, and our total electricity in kilowatt hours is going to be 3.1 now. I think that's going to be right if I go for the 1666 there, the, um, the current consumption there. So let's click submit on that and we've got a binary sensor. I'm just going to click submit on that. And now we've created a configuration for local brilliant uh, and we're going to click on the drop down menu there and I'm gonna just put this in the studio for now and we'll click finish. So we've got local brilliant here with one device, one entity. Uh, we can, uh, I'm just going to reload that as well. And if we click on one device, we should see the device there. And uh, we've got our settings, we've got our controls here. It's showing as unavailable. So what sometimes happens with these is it won't work if you have the To Your Smart app open and I've just closed the To Your Smart app and it, you see it is available now and we've got the light on uh, and uh, we can see that there. Okay, so we've got the device into Home Assistant and what I've done is I've created a uh, demo dashboard here. We've got the Arlec Grid Connect switch socket and that is just the uh, standard two-year integration here. And we've got the local Brilliant, which is the local two-year integration. And we these are just a standard button card. It's just so that we can do some testing of how these react inside Home Assistant. So for the Arlec Grid Connect switch socket, I'm going to click on that and we will see how long it takes to turn on. That was particularly slow. Uh, I suspect there might be a bit of a communication delay. It just needed to warm up. I'm not sure. Uh, we'll turn it off. Okay, about a half a second lag, what we would normally expect with the standard to your integration. I'll turn it back on. Okay, again, about half a second lag and I'll turn it back off. Okay, so that's the standard to your integration using the cloud service. Let's try the local brilliant switch and Okay, that is night and day. This is almost instantaneous. It completely erases the problem that I have experienced in the past with two year devices, and that is the latency of the device. 
that's phenomenally quick. That is that is so good that I will be changing all of my smart switches where possible over to use local to you. This is brilliant. This is this is fantastic. I love this. Yeah, the the standard to your integration is so much slower. And the other thing that we need to bear in mind here is that when I click this button, we're sending a signal out to a cloud server, which in my case is in Central Europe. Uh, and then that has to make a round trip back uh, once the server has received the command and um, we're then going to turn on the light. Versus this is all handled locally. Absolutely night and day with the responsiveness. Okay, so we've seen how local to you works with switches. Let's take a look at how it works with this light globe. Now, as I said before, I've never done this before with a light globe. I've not even tested this functionality. So we'll be learning it together. Okay, so I'm going to be looking for my brilliant globe here and I'm gonna grab that device ID. I'm going to head back over to Home Assistant and I'm going to go to Configuration, Devices and Services again and I'm going to click Add Integration, searching for Local to you again, clicking on that and uh, the device that I'm looking for is BFE713 is the beginning. So I'm looking for BFE713, I think this might be it. I'm pretty sure this is it, so 192.168.1.92. I'm going to click on that and we're going to click submit. So by using the device ID in the discovery there, we've just already automatically populated the host and the device ID. So we then don't need to go through the process of using LandScan to find the details. We still need the local key and we still need to give it a name. So I'm going to call this local brilliant globe. And the local key I need to grab from my spreadsheet and I need to paste that in there and we will click submit. The entity type selection we need is a light and we're going to click submit on that. And now we have a much more complicated uh, form that we need to fill out. So uh, all the settings except for ID can be changed from the options page later. So the different pins that we have are 20, 21, 22, 24, 25, and 26. Now I'm not 100% sure which ones are which. I'm gonna call this local brilliant globe. Uh, brightness, which is only used for the white color. Uh, let me see if I can get a different value by opening this up in the Tuya app here and turning this down a bit. So brightness, I'm gonna select this value one thousand i think that's the right one so we can see from the menu that the brightness lower value is 29 then the brightness upper value is a thousand so i think it's fair to say that this value of a thousand is probably the right one uh, we see here we've got color mode and if i click this drop down we see we've got this value here of white now uh, this is the second take of this and before it was on color mode and uh, this said color so i'm going to select that and i'm going to assume that that is the correct setting uh, now for the color, I also now need to make an educated guess as to what we're going to put in here. I'm going to select this 26. I think that's probably going to be the one that I need. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll probably just leave it at that. And the other thing to note here is that we can select the color temperature range in K. I'm just gonna leave this at 2700 and 2700 because this globe doesn't have white to warm white. It's, it purely does uh, one color. So for scene, I might uh, grab this uh, hex value here that I'm just making a, a basic guess here. Uh, and I'll click submit on that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to close the Tuya Smart app on my phone because I have a feeling that that is going to cause some problems. I'm gonna click, I'm gonna leave this binary sensor here and I'm gonna leave do not add any more entities and click submit. 
and we're going to put this in the studio and click finish and we should have a local brilliant globe show up in local to you so i will click on that and then we've got the one device and one entity which we can also click on and this may take a moment to show up and be available in home assistant uh, because if we look here we'll see that it's showing as unavailable uh, and that was 25 seconds ago so what i'm hoping is that in a few moments uh, this will show up what i might even do is go back to uh, the integrations page and just quickly reload the integration uh, to see if that helps us out at all. Okay, so it has shown up in Home Assistant and I still had the To Your Smart app open. So let's take a look and grab the brightness. So the brightness is working. Off and on is working beautifully. If I go to red, is that going to work? Okay, so the red, the blue, and the green. The color's not working properly, so I might have selected the wrong item for the color value there. Uh, and we've got effect. Uh, we've got a couple of different effects available here. So we had rainbow, we had shine. Uh, we had night, uh, that didn't seem to do much. We got soft. So the effects seem to be working. If I go back into the To Your Smart app here, we can see that it is on the soft scene. If I select the drop down and grab a rainbow, it changes to colorful. Uh, if I go to beautiful, goes to gorgeous in the app so that's interesting uh, and if i go to white it goes back to white if i grab color so the colors aren't working which suggests to me that i've probably selected the wrong pin so what i'm going to do is see if i can fix that by going to configuration devices and services uh, local brilliant globe and i'll click on configure here uh, and let's see if I can modify the entity. So I'm gonna leave that there, click submit, and then we're back onto the entity configuration. And for color, I want to grab, I'm going to try this number 24, and I'll click submit on that, and successfully saved, so I'll click finish. So now that I've made that change, we'll go back to the device, we'll open it up, and look at the controls and red. Yes, blue and green. This is fantastic. So we've now got full local control of our brilliant smart two-year enabled light globe. And what's really very interesting is that as I click these items in Home Assistant, we're actually getting feedback in the To Your Smart app as well, which is awesome. This is great. I'm so happy with this result. And it's so responsive. It's really fantastic. So that's using local To Your in Home Assistant to get your To Your based devices out of the cloud. And I have to say, I'm very, very impressed with the results. Now let's take a look at some pros and cons here. Starting with pros, you saw how different the latency between the standard cloud integration and the local to your integration were. There's also the key benefit of now we can control our to your enabled accessories completely cloud free. And that also means that you could theoretically put all of your local to your controlled devices on a wireless network that's been completely disconnected from the internet and you'd still be able to control them. Or if your internet goes down, your smart accessories will still respond. With many manufacturers moving over to the Realtek controller chips, instead of using ASP8266s, having the ability to flash to your devices with TAS motor is starting to become the exception instead of the rule. And with local Tuya, we can still get our devices out of the cloud 
without having to go and flash custom firmware on the device or go and desolder the controller chip and swap it out for an ESP8266. Now, in terms of cons, the setup is pretty involved and it is a per device integration in Home Assistant. And that means that if you've got 10 entities, you're going to be going through the Home Assistant integration menus 10 times. If you've got 20 entities, you're going through it 20 times. And it's not always obvious when you're setting up the accessory what the pin settings should be. As you saw, we didn't quite get them right with the light bulb on the first go round, and we had to make some changes there. We don't have a handy reference like we did with Black Adder Tasmoda to find the right setup. And some of what we go through here is going to be trial and error like you saw. Another thing to consider here is that you may lose some functionality like energy monitoring if you're not able to set up the accessory with the right details. As always, your mileage will probably vary here. So let me know in the comments section down below what you think of local to you and whether you're planning to set it up in your smart home. That's all we have for this video and I do hope that it helped you in your smart home journey. Be sure to comment down below with home automation ideas that you want to see me cover in future videos. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button down below to give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider changing that now. And while you're at it, if you hit the bell icon, you'll get notified when I release a new video each week. Lastly, if you enjoy what I'm doing here and you want to help to support the channel, there is a buy me a coffee link in the video description down below. Contributions made through the buy me a coffee link are put towards making more and better content for you to enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now. <laughs>